I'm not going to talk. I'm leaving. That's it. Nah, it takes too long to get the thing rolling. You know, my director, George Paul, I shouldn't say my because I don't own this man. He's a great guy. He's a fun guy. He's a creative guy. A slim, well, not a slim, but a trim with it guy. He's been smiling all day today because we have the crane tonight. The crane is the camera that goes up to the ceiling and you see these fantastic wide shots. And it's a super effect if you have a cast of thousands. Now, we have a cast of thousands. But I play hundreds all by myself out here. I mean, it's a little ridiculous. However, the reason we have the crane tonight is we got something tonight that you are not going to believe. If you thought the flying boat last night was something, and, and it was something, tonight we have a device which came in this afternoon and electrified our lot here in Burbank about 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. It is a tank. Is it lighted up now? Yeah. Jerry, go right back up the other way and show the tank. Go, go ahead. We, as long as we're paying $800 for this damn thing, we might as well get some use out of it. All right, so now they'll roll it back and you'll get to see the tank. I love a wide shot. <laughs> we have a man in, uh, in here tonight uh, who uh, uh, rents out for $200 per night this tank. It is the most eccentric and, would you believe it, the most in vogue form of transportation available in posh Beverly Hills, posh Bel Air, or posh West Los Angeles. It also sells in Hollywood. It's air conditioned, it has color television, it has stereo, it'll go 55 miles an hour, and if you're in this tank, nobody <laughs> with you, okay? And, and what'll it carry, two people? It'll carry four people, and it is the, it, people rent this instead of limousines in the Los Angeles area. As a matter of fact, it turns out that this thing was rented for tonight by a couple who is commemorating, what, their 50th wedding anniversary tonight, or 45th? And, and we brought them by limo to Burbank, and they will leave from our studios for their 45th or 50th wedding anniversary at the end of the show tonight. All right, now, George, punch it back up, and let's see it come back down. 800 for this baby. Let's see it. Oh, you, oh from that. How close can you get to me from that far away? I mean, they're what, 50 feet away from me? Now, now George, don't move it in and say, how, how close can you get to, to, to me from here? No, from right there, like if you zoomed right in, what would happen? Oh, that's fantastic. What, what does that thing cost? Nobody said anything about money. Well, how much does it cost not to use tonight, but if, you, if, you, if I wanted to go out and buy one of those for home video, what would it cost? <laughs> More than a McDonald's? More. More than a McDonald's. I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't mean just one hamburger, George. I mean the whole stand, you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, we're going to show the tank later on tonight. My first guest tonight are people that you will also not believe. They are, they are members of an organization called Rock and Roll Heaven. They have all undergone plastic surgery to look more like the dead rock and roll stars they, they portray in their act. We have with us tonight a man uh, who portrays Jim Morrison of The Doors. We have a woman who plays the late Janis Joplin. We have a man who plays Jim Croce. And finally, we'll have a man who plays Elvis Presley. And as if that is not enough, we have a gentleman here, my new friend, right? My new best friend. I was listening to him today. Uh, his name is Neil Ross. Natural Neil, he calls himself. He appears on radio station KZLAFM in Los Angeles, and he does a thing called News Roulette. Now, let me give you the example. Is he going to do the story about the car out here? I can do that. He went on the air one morning, and he gave a news item about a, uh, about a guy who saw an ad in the paper for a Mercedes-Benz car for $75. So the guy went over to the house, and there was a woman there, and, and he said, is it true that you have a Mercedes for sale for $75? And the woman said, oh, yeah, that's, that's very, very true. And he said, well, is it still here? And the woman said, oh, it's right back in the garage. Come on, I'll show it to you. So they went back to the garage, and here is a brand-new 1978 or 79 Mercedes $30,000 car, and this lady is going to pedal it for $75. So he gives her a certified check for $75, bucks and he drives the car home. And he calls her back the next day, and he said, boy, he says, the car is really super, uh, but I wonder why you sold it for $75. And she said, well, my husband ran off with his secretary, and he called me the other day and said, sell the car and send me the money. Now, the guy puts this on the news in Southern California. It is the oldest chestnut I've heard. I mean, that, that joke is so old. But he puts it on the news, and it's funny if you're listening while you're in the car. 
And what we're also going to do is when we have the rock star lookalikes here, we have pictures of the real rock stars, and we'll compare them to see how real they look. And if you don't like that, we'll all go home. We'll be right back with the, uh, with the, uh, I, I, yeah, the rock and roll heaven. And it may be heaven to them, but it's going to be hell for me. We'll be right back now after these words from our sponsors. The greatest medical wonder ever created is your own body. It actually works to correct its own problems. So when occasional constipation is a problem, help your body help itself with pleasant tasting Haley's M.O. Haley's M.O. works with your body while you sleep for overnight relief. It gives you a lubricant plus an effective laxative that uses your body's own water to soften without irritants or harsh ingredients. For effective overnight relief, get Haley's M.O. It helps your body help itself. Dr. Hogan, Dr. Hogan. You're him? Let me check his pressure. Dr. Hogan, I'll be right back. Let me see if I can fix it. No, thanks, dear. I'll wait for the doctor. Dr. Hogan, towards me. Oh. Even when you can't hold up any longer, your hair still looks great thanks to Final Net. Final Net isn't an aerosol. It's concentrated to keep your hair beautiful all day. Final Net holds up longer than you do. Dr. Hogan, I hear he's excellent. Here's my old furniture polish, Pledge. Here's my new, Behold. Here's why. I had problems cleaning greasy marks like these crayons. I'll spray Pledge here, Behold here. Guess what? Behold clean the mark better. Frankly, both are fine for shining, cleaning, and protecting. But why not use the one that cleans greasy marks better? And are you ready for this? Cost less, too. Behold, a lot of cleaning for less money. Lauren Green? Yes, ma'am. Oh, now, don't tell me about Alpo. I use it dry. You do? Then try this dry. Alpo beef flavored dinner. They're all alike. Not really. There's only one Alpo. It's got good meat protein flavored with real beef juices. The taste of beef dogs love. Taste of beef, huh? Yep. And now your dog can get that great Alpo taste, too. I'll try it. Try the dry from Alpo. After all, who knows more about the taste of beef than Alpo? <laughs> We're going to go down the wrong road tonight, I can tell you that, <laughs> but it's going to be fun. Now here is the rock group, Rock and Roll Heaven, whose members have all undergone uh, reconstructive surgery, plastic surgery, to make them appear like rock stars of the past. First of all, as Jim Morrison of The Doors, here is Mr. Duke O'Connell. Now, can I call you Duke, or should I call you Jim? Uh, call me Duke, please. Call me Duke. You can call me Ray. Yeah. Okay. Here is Mona Moore, who portrays the late Janis Joplin. Uh, here is Mark Hazelbrock, who uh, portrays the late Jim Croce. And finally, uh, here is, uh, well, I got the wrong card here, Jesse. Uh, also the wrong card. Oh, we're going to have a wonderful time. Jesse Bolt, who portrays the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. How much reconstructive surgery had to be done to you to make you appear as you now appear? Well, each of us had different uh, levels, different degrees of surgery, you know. Uh, some of us were already closer to the appearance than others, you know. I myself didn't have very much done, uh, you know. In fact, my mother came up to visit me the other day and up in Tahoe. We were playing up there and, uh, you know, the only, the biggest difference was the, uh, the perm, you know. Mm -hmm. Other than that, there uh, wasn't nothing too major. But, 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 like, did people come to you on the street and say, hey, you look like, uh, like Janis Joplin? Never. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> Not once. Well, I, I, well, I don't. <laughs> the point is, do we sound like them? I think. That's yeah, I understand that, but people want to know, and I wish we had. You know, we're missing one thing here tonight. What's that? Pictures of how you appeared before, because you can do mm -hmm. a lot with, you know, with uh, perms or how you comb your hair or how mm -hmm. long it is or what kind of makeup you wear and stuff like that. But when it gets to changing your face, it would be interesting to know how much change really took place. Or if you drop the permanent, would you all look as you did before? Oh, no. No, no not at all. No, no. Um, one of the prerequisites for even uh, having an opportunity to portray the character was you had to already bear a physical resemblance to your character. It, it'd be medically, I guess, impossible to take someone that looked totally foreign 
uh, yeah. and change them into a duplicate of someone else. We had to already resemble the characters and then be willing to uh, undergo um, cosmetic or plastic surgery to resemble them even more. And that's what we did. But what was done to you? Do you mind saying what they did to um, you? No, I don't mind. I don't mind. The, the work that was done on me was done in the area of my eyes. Uh, I'm 30 years old and I looked 34 or 35. We do have before pictures. Uh, I don't know why they're not here, but uh, we've shown them before several times. They've been in newspapers and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. I, I saw them in the done, paper yeah. articles that they gave me on mm -hmm. all of you. Sure. I'm yeah. actually 45. And they <laughs> <laughs> and when I, why would you want to be Elvis Presley? Did you just pick that out of the blue? How did each of you decide who you wanted to be? Uh, you want to go the, the beginning? I, I was doing Elvis. You know, well, I like to, instead of say doing, I actually like, you know, it's, it's an act. I'm an actor, I, I, I think, you know. And I don't wear my hair like this. I don't, this is the costume, man, mm -hmm. the hairstyle. Mm -hmm. I don't do this, you know. <laughs> this is for the show. But uh, a couple of years ago, uh, like a lot of people, a lady talked me into it. Uh, uh, auditioning <laughs> and uh, for a part and I got it and I studied it and and I think I got pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. We've all had varying, de varying degrees of experience like we weren't just standing around in some street corner or working in uh, some obscure place not related to show business. We were all already in show biz yeah. in different uh, respects. I've had drama experience and I've been a musician and a singer and so forth and so has so have all the rest of the people. So we weren't just uh, not in the business already. We already were. In fact, some of us, like Jesse said, were already into our characters before this thing happened. Like I was doing, like, you know, summer stock, you know, like Bye Bye Birdie, like, which is a takeoff on Elvis, you know. And I uh, did a lot of other things as well, like country music and uh, you know, rock and roll bands and Nashville. Mm -hmm. Nashville? Yeah. Nashville. Well, Melvin. What I'm getting at here is, like, why did you decide to be Jim Croce? And why did you decide to be Janis Joplin? Somebody called me up and said, hey, you want to do this? Well, all right, said, okay, sure. now, who was that person? Uh, it was the man who initially produced the, the show that we have now. He knew me in Ohio, and he knew I used to do a little bit of Joplin. You know, like, I do her songs. I'd never gone out and done her, per se. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, sure, that sounds outrageous. Let's go. And so we did it, you know. But did he say up front to you, that you've got to have something done with your face? Well, yes and no. He kind of went, a little bit of plastic surgery. You know, and I trusted this guy because I didn't know any of these people. So I said, sure, that sounds good, you know. And we thought it was going to be for like a 17-day thing in Atlanta. And I got down there, and, you know, the next thing I know, I'm being sedated and whisked off in hallways and doctors. And, you know, and there it was. So mm -hmm. here I still am. Mm -hmm. Just kind of fell into it. And uh, did, were you a big Jim Croce fan? Yes, I was, and people always used to come up to me and say, hey, you know, he looked just like Jim Croce. Finally, I got a guy out here who oh, says yeah, somebody well, came happened. up to him at some point in his life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, really? something friend of mine. Was, yeah, it was I happening mean, all the time. Yeah, I don't want to be around yeah, the bush or anything like that. Ho, 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 but you're not like Jim Croce. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, oh, oh, oh. I probably look least like my character than anybody, and you just happen to ask me first, but I'm, I was the wrong one. three of us, were, I've, it's happened several times. Yeah. It happens to him all the time, Yeah, and, and Mark, too. And it happens to me, you know, sometimes I don't wear my hair like this when I'm not in the character, but... Uh, you know, still people can say, you know, you look... And I was doing Morrison years and years ago, six, seven years ago. It was so, always in the back of my mind to do an act like this. You know, it was just, this is the right time and place. You know, I was talking to Danny O'Day, our manager, one day, and telling him about the resemblance and everything. And, uh, you know, we kind of put the idea for Rock and Roll Heaven together because of all these dead people. Yeah. You know, and they <laughs> died so early in their careers that we thought it'd be an excellent idea to try to deliver this to the people because there's so many fans out there that are missing these people because they died so early in their careers. And even the people that did see them would like to see them again, you know? And, and mm -hmm. we do please the audiences very well. You well, know? I was going to ask yeah. you, when you all come out, do they go crazy? Huh? Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. we go out uh -huh. on stage and on first sight and, you know... The real thing definitely has an edge because, like, Janice would go out and there's thousands and thousands of screaming freaks ready to rock and roll and when you walk out there at eight o'clock at night and you have you know 200 little old ladies from turlock sitting there you know who don't have oh. any idea what i see you know they've got a but then again, there, your there are the nights where you have the, the crowd story sure, that you're yeah. shooting for. The people of the 60s, you know, our generation, we're all children of the, uh, the products, rather, of the 60s. And uh, <coughs> have relic. empathy with the music. I, you know, I think uh, my, as far as my character, uh, the group definitely have made a statement. And uh, 
the music that they did and, and the lyrics that Jim Morrison wrote still stand. And uh, he was a philosopher, you know, and philosophy isn't really subject to time, especially decades, you know. It's That's the way I feel. Yeah, yeah, very good. Let me try this one. You know, Bing Crosby's dead, and nobody's doing Bing Crosby uh, reincarnated. Um, Nat Something King, with yeah. your ears, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give our manager two more days. Or Nat King Cole. Um, yeah, that'd be nice. Or Great. others. Um, there's a lot of them. Yeah, but there's but maybe there's something peculiar to the people that you represent in terms of I their talent and their appeal peculiar. and their so audience we... that they want to keep seeing them over and yeah. over. Yeah. That's well, a... they were young and they died early in the careers, like I said before. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just like Croce was just just getting up there. He was yeah. going to be big, you yeah. know. And uh, he had that plane crash, which was very unfortunate. And, uh, that was so an outrageous time. There's outrageous. a lot of disappointed fans, yeah. eager, you know, for. Uh, Is it harder to play Presley than any other? Maybe because there are uh, there are quite a few imitators around now. Yes, certainly <laughs> is. Certainly yeah, but he's is. so good at it. He's, he's, he's like is he really? Yes. yes, indeed. Terrific. Do we have a little piece of film that shows him doing Presley? We had it for Crowley's record. We had the Morris well, can we, can we, we have, we had one of you doing Elvis, but I guess the film quality is such that they don't want to run it. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say film quality, I mean that the, that there's a dirt on the print or something. You're fine, but the film is technically not acceptable Glenn. so that people well, don't you. think that you do. mm -hmm. it's all right. Well, I mean, the fuck, I don't want anybody out here. Uh, but we do, <laughs> but here is a Jim Morrison one. So take a look at this, and then we'll continue after these words from the NBC television stations in your community. I think Peace Corps is a good thing. It seems to be better than a lot of foreign aid because it's personal. It's people to people. Okay, I think a lot of people join Peace Corps to find themselves. I didn't. I thought I knew who it was, where it was going, didn't have any doubt. It turned out to be the best thing I did. Peace Corps is an individual experience. The success of Peace Corps lies in just the volunteer himself. You know, you never know what you can do until you do it. I may not ever do this again, but I did it once. There are a lot of personal reasons for joining the Peace Corps, bound together by one strong desire, to live and work with people around the world. It's not easy. It takes commitment. But two years is a short time to ask for an experience that lasts a lifetime. The past two years has been an incredible living experience, and it's something I'm not going to forget, for sure. If you have what it takes, give us a call. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. are looking at an abused child. Most men and women in prison today were abused children. The severe neglect and physical, sexual, and emotional abuse of our children make child abuse a national tragedy. It is estimated that there are at least one million cases of it in America each year. Over 2,000 of those abused children die each year. And because many abused children grow up to abuse their own children, child abuse is passed on from generation to generation. For many families, child abuse is a family tradition. Yet child abusers can be helped. Help destroy a family tradition. Write Prevent Child Abuse, Box 2866, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. We're talking with Mr. Duke O'Connell, who portrays uh, Jim Morrison of the Doors in a rock group which is called Rock and Roll Heaven. We have Mona Moore, who plays the late Janis Joplin, uh, Mark Hazelbrook, who is uh, Jim Croce, and uh, finally Jesse Bolt as uh, Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. Uh, you brought up a good point, uh, uh, Duke, during the break, is that there are a lot of people who might think you're just ripping off an occasion here, finding a way to make a fast buck and then out the door onto something else, and, that, uh, and, and you said that is really not the case. You're not just right. doing this to rip off somebody else's talent or imitate them. Most people right. think that till they hear well, it. Well, some people, you know, a lot of people, are, well, we really haven't been accused of it that much, but in the beginning, when we first got the show going, 
and the promo and publicity and so forth of the surgery, then is mainly when, when people were saying, well, they're just doing it for a fast buck and so forth. But in the beginning, there wasn't a fast buck. We had to have, after the surgery, we had a certain break-in period, too, because people weren't just going to accept it because we had had surgery to look like somebody else. They wanted mm -hmm. to know, could the group produce? You know, and, and so far, the group has been well accepted. But about your point is we wouldn't be doing it, and there's no way that I could, you know, totally convince people of this. But I say it and with a clear conscience, we wouldn't be doing it only just for the money. We feel empathy for the characters. We're all products of the 60s, and, and we, we can feel what we're doing. It would be a pretty, you know, strange, tacky, and cheesy situation if it weren't done as well as it is. Besides the four of us being able to portray our characters, we have this unbelievable band oh, behind yeah, it that crazy. just, oh. Gorgeous 10-piece band. Ten -piece band. Nice. It's just, you know, it's great. It's like it's saying, uh, I'd like to have a band with these people and these people, and, and we have mm -hmm. the Flim Flam Band, and they're marvelous. You know, everybody who performs wants to be known for themselves. There you go. <laughs> and you I go. wonder how long you can sublimate, if that's the right word, your own talents and personalities uh, in this performance and with this group before something inside all of you is going to say, hey, I'm me, I want to get out of here and have them I want to be where the where the light is shining on me, not on Jim Croce or Elvis Presley or, or Janis yeah. Joplin. Well, I think Senator. anybody who plays, you know, well, like we are, you know, acting also besides being musicians or whatever, you know, it's an acting situation and anyone who is basically creative is probably pretty schizophrenic also. So you're at least getting to do a part of yourself. Like I know doing Joplin is, is a little piece of myself. But it is, it's frustrating for sure, you know. I, sometimes I'd give my teeth to go ahead and sing a ballad, you know, go out there, hello, <laughs> instead of yeah, well, screaming well, out well, with a bottle of whiskey. To that, to that level, you know, like uh, up until now, we've been like on the, on the club level, you know, doing, you know, uh, whatever was selling, top 40, disco, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. country and western. And uh, this, this is kind of getting us to the level where we're being acknowledged and recognized for the talent that we have so that uh, ultimately we'll be able to, to show our own talent in our own respect. It's know? really not a whole lot different than, than a Broadway show that runs for three or four or five years and a person comes out and does whatever their character is. Well, Beatlemania, mm -hmm. look at which yeah. has been running for a Beatlemania, long time. Terrific so people show, have, uh, I have not seen it, but people who have gone yeah. to see it, they come out and they say, hey, that's Ringo and that's Paul and those are these guys. Yeah. They're there. You see them. Right. But they didn't have their faces played with. And I, I don't want to sound like I'm hung up on that, you know. But Well, we just most see people it are. Makeup, you know, the well, let's makeup. see you wipe it off. Well, it is reversible, for one thing. But, you know, it would be more trouble and be worth. It really, like, I had a piece of plastic put in my chin here to fill out this round here. Like Duke was saying before, they'd have to put me in there with hacksaws and chains and hammers, be in there for months and years on end to make my face look like Jonathan's face. And besides that, the changes but, uh, were mostly improvements. You know, all they were like all the old good. joke about the mule, you got to get their attention first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. In a nutshell. That's mm -hmm. where that's well, at. you could do it with a nutshell, but I find two bricks are usually a little bit more effective, <laughs> well, if you understand what I mean. I sure do. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the, the surgery was beneficial for everybody. For one thing, I look younger than I did. I wouldn't have done something that made me look old or terrible yeah, or ugly or yeah. anything like that. Before you became these personalities, let me just go around the horn. What were each of you doing? Let me start with you, Duke. Well, like I was telling you before. Or, no, you're not Duke. I'm no. sorry. This is Duke. This is Duke. Yeah. Uh, Jess. You're Jess. Jess. I was doing the Elvis impersonation before, and then before that I did like country music, like I said, you know, and quite a bit of acting here and there, a few commercials and stuff. And I hope this is like a stepping stone to somebody might come in and say, well, if you can do this, maybe you can do uh, James Dean or somebody. I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. just top of my head, somebody else. Mm -hmm. I was uh, playing bass with the Flim Flam Band, which is now the backup band. Uh, Duke and I and a couple other people in the band have been together for several years doing that. And I was the band leader of that band and the front man, drummer, and, and so forth. In fact, we were together, you know. It was mm -hmm. like we did uh, an Elvis show. And he played drums. Originally, I was the drummer backing his Elvis show before I got into the Jim Morrison character. Same. <laughs> Rock bands, lounge bands, duos, singles, you know. Just Singing anywhere you can to further sure. your talent and, right. and, and your career. Doing other things <laughs> besides Janice, you know. But you do one Janice tune and, and they'll never let you go. I've tried many times. I'll never do it again. I swear to God, I'll never sing another Janice Joplin song as long as I live. 
Look at me. <laughs> I can't get away from but her. you got to give them what it's they want. It's not an easy... Oh, exactly. Show there, You've got to be commercially successful. Sure. Now, was it hard for you all? Well, you were doing Elvis impersonations, so for you, you were doing it. And you were doing uh, Janis Joplin songs was, as yourself. Song, yeah, yeah. But was it hard for you to become Jim Croce? You know, well, and to do I, I operator and Croce, but yes, it was. It took a lot of rehearsal, and it was still an ongoing process, where a daily thing, where you know, you have to listen to the tapes and you know, and really get get in tune with his voice, you know, and get the intonation and every inflections correct, you know. And you read everything you can possibly get your hands on to further understand the character. Like Jim Morrison was a poet, and he wrote volumes and volumes of poetry and screenplays and and other things, and uh, everything that he's ever written, I, I've read. And uh, just anything that you, every time you see his name or his picture or character anything study, connected. Study the character. Right, character exactly. study. Yeah. Just We've been totally trying involved. to get film clips, you know, which would be very, very helpful from yeah, you know, various Yeah, I'm stale, stale memories from my psychedelic youth, you know. She was just my hero, and ten years ago, what I'm doing now would have, you know, was about all I could possibly dream of, you know, but I grew up and away from that particular kind of music and, ah, using one's voice or whatever, mm -hmm. but you can't get away from it. And that whole personality is a, like, a piece of myself anyway. What That's about the, 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 the families or the artistic representation of the artists whom you portray? Any kind of legal flack or, or royalties that have to be paid or, or we don't want this no, done? No, we, we haven't had any troubles yet. I've written to, his, to Mr. Croce's family personally trying to get some communication going to see how they felt about it, to, to let them know I was perfectly earnest in doing this and to, to find out any kind of information I could about his personality or whatever would help in portraying him. Uh, I haven't received any reply from them, but I have received an endorsement from his record company, which I was pretty pleased about. And uh, several albums and pictures and bio biographies mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. So uh, people have been pretty cooperative in general, you know, and pretty positive. As far as negative things like flack that you mentioned, there there hasn't been anything to my knowledge, either officially or, or really unofficially. Nor am I so, trying to drum any up, honestly. Right. Yeah. But you wonder, yeah. you no, know, but you wonder. Yeah. Oh, sure. It's because you really are uh, re reviving careers of very famous people who right. were very, very popular and made a lot of you money. You start hearing uh, yeah. these people's tunes on the radio more and more as time goes on, you know, and that shows uh, the interest is reviving, you know. Now, uh, yeah, it's coming around. I have to ask, where are you playing now? Uh, Reno, Harris and Reno. Harris and Reno. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does it does it go well in that with that crowd there? Yeah. Very well. Really? And that's a mixed crowd. That's not uh, like we came from Tahoe before that, Harris and Tahoe. that was a younger, younger crowd. Yeah. So we expected to to go over well there, and we did. Uh, and Reno, like I say, is an older crowd, so we were a little uh, a little hesitant, you know. But uh, it's going over just as well there. The like I say, that's the, the old folks. At first, they never quite know what to think, you know. And and then the older ladies and stuff. And then Jesse comes out. Ah, Elvis. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, oh you, well, I like them all then. Takes, <laughs> you know? take, takes you back. Yeah. You know? yeah. You're back there yeah. again, like yeah. uh, this. People uh, people sit there in a, in a row in the first row and cry. You know, they hear certain yeah. things that they really <laughs> really identify. With, that you know? is what makes it worthwhile. That is what you get off on. That is what uh, gives you the feeling that you're doing something, rather than we were touring the country before playing supper clubs and show lounges, but not like Harris and, and the I other made places. People cry on my own. That's a good feeling too. Yeah. <laughs> That's a better yeah. feeling to have somebody go, ah, oh, well if you can do Janice, like you said, well maybe you can do this. Yeah. It's even better for somebody to say, well if you can do Janice, ah, then what do you sound like? You know, that's Listen, that I've got to get on to news roulette here, but I really yep. enjoyed meeting all of you. This sounds awfully interesting, and I hope that you play L.A. sometime, because I would really like to come and see, see this. We're not crazy. Do. I beg your pardon? We're not crazy. No, no, you're doing, no, you're doing New York. You're doing New York. That's okay, New York. Well, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as I you. said, uh, going off in the last commercial, you really have got him. Jim Morris. Thank, thank you very much. All right. Thank, uh, members of Rock and Roll Heaven. Is, have I got that right? Yeah, right. Right. No, no, okay. no clone heads. No clone heads. <laughs> no, no clone heads. I said that three nights ago and I've been properly chastised. I have the marks right here. Oh, in the room. Yeah. <laughs> See, kind of into it, aren't you? We'll be right back with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Natural Neil after these words from our natural sponsors. Stay tuned.